good evening. This is um, story time with Gina. I've been sitting here playing around you all, looking at this thing. And Gina, honey, that's not nice of you to be playing around like that. I can't help it. Really couldn't help it. I just started playing around. But the real thing, what am I going to do the video on? I wanted to do the video on the star from last night, but then I said I can't even get a um, a good, clear thing of that video. It wasn't a, too good of a video that I could show it. Show it. But look at this, you all, the real. The power of the coming race. Now we can see we got some real women of the World War II. And you know who was in World War II. Yes, we know, Gina. We know what happened. Well, um, yeah. So this is, is kind of interesting. And I, I do want to look at this. Let me make sure I've got this turned down low. And um, let me come over here and turn on this thing right here you all because there's something there's something going on with the uh, real there really is hello Michael hello Debbie McClure mama bear Carol straight Shay Sage Petrima Ashley Michael Jesse James okay you all hello Frank Cooper hello everyone so the coming real can you hear me good yes we can hear you Gina honey that's great um we got it we got it. Uh, okay, I want to look into it. I want to make sure I got my window capture off. I'm trying to <laughs> oh my goodness gracious, you all. Good evening. I want to show you some of the things they have. They have a book, The Coming Real, The Power of the Coming Race. Um, there's like this UFO mania you can see right here. There's, there's all kinds of things on it. There is tons and tons of things. Um, you can like look at um, this. You can look at the the Vril from the Wikipedia. The Power of the Coming Race is a novel. Readers believe the account of a superior subterranean master race. Do you all feel that there is a superior subterranean master race? And the energy form called Vril. Have you ever have you heard of that? The energy form called Vril. I don't want to have a filter on me. Because um, the filter kind of does something to me. Let me take off the filter on here. I don't know what it's going to do to me. Because when I go to another thing. Hello. You haven't heard of it? Yeah. A, sub a subterranean race. The name which is shortened to Vril. Okay. We got that. Um, and here's some different pictures. They had so many books. Now think about it. Why would you have so many books on something that does not exist? Why would they? The coming race. So we know someone who wanted to create the perfect race. We really do know someone who did. Just look at all these pictures right here and of course there's ufos involved the power and um let's look at it kind of look like the lost city of atlantis or something right there I'm, I'm not sure about that look at the different things um you got an audio you got this just look at some of these pictures really fast there's something to it otherwise there would not be lots and lots of books written on it. it looks like there's an angel thing right here too and um, look at what's this thing twirling around inside there chasing something the power of the coming race all of it yeah whoopsie okay you all look at this so oh wow all right so we got this it's, there we go we got it we got it gina we get the gist of it okay you get the gist of it okay i got the gist of it too i do do we have a, um, a volunteer moderator on here? Anybody want to volunteer to moderate? Because um, that would be great. Um, yeah, so someone speaks of the Vareal a lot. Okay, that is great if you do. Mm. Hold on one second, you all. Let me do this. Good day. Good day, you all. 
I wanted to, um, hmm. No, no, I, I think I, I want to look at this book. Let me look at, let's look at this book. Um, okay. Okay, we got it. We got a standard moderator on here. Now let's come here. Let's see this. The Vareal. The Power of the Coming Race. Can we see that? Right there. And of course, it was a long time ago, so there is something to that. Let's see if we can make this bigger. It's right here, 1972. This is interesting, and it's been digitalized, which is great. Can y'all hear me? Let me put myself right here. What will humanity be like in the coming decades? This is the question. What will humanity be like? Today, when our concepts of time and space have undergone changes undreamed of by most people, uh, even a generation ago, this has become a major question confronting us all. And they are talking about time and space. One can perhaps grasp something of what our modern technological achievements demand in so far as man's future inner development is concerned. If one considers the change of consciousness which came about, for example, in the comparatively short time between the closing decades of the medieval age and the dawn of our modern world in the Renaissance, in those, reach, in those years, no single area of human experience remained unaltered. Now, that is true, you all. It hasn't. The transformation of men's mind, which resulted from the awakening from the dream of the Middle Ages to the glories of the Renaissance, involved a complete break with their former way of looking at the earth beneath their feet, at their fellow man, and at the heavens arching over their heads. In a similar fashion today, the fruits of the 20th century Technical developments are rapidly and magically transforming every detail of our daily lives. The food we eat, the clothes we wear, the houses we live in, our choice of environment, our mode of travel and communication, our political, religious, social, and intellectual outlook. Enormous, often extremely disquieting emergence of a totally new dimension you are of consciousness resulting from a transformed earthly and cosmic experience of men and women everywhere i'm reading this this beginning of this book of the coming real the coming race the emerging future of the earth and of each individual makes it imperative that this new consciousness achieve a proportion adequate to the new horizons opened by the space age and at the same time, a stature in which dignity and value of every human being is fully recognized and preserved. The development of this new quality of consciousness involves two cardinal dangers, however. So we do have an, a, a, a conscious awakening that is occurring, you know, and it's some people say the, the, the woke stuff is happening, but then humanity is awakening to what is going on right now but is this the consciousness that they're talking about really think about it it involves two cardinal dangers however the one concerns the principle of soulless deception which finds in the materialism often a highly refined materialism well, i already did that often a highly refined materialism to be sure and in the materialistic view of the world, a completely satisfying, entirely absorbing outlook in which the life of the soul finds no place. The other danger expresses itself in prideful illusions of achievement, resulting in a neglect uh, and disdain for the life on earth, and it tasks in favor of a nebulous, evanescent dream of a paradise. The first strives to lift the earth and human thinking limited to and bound up in earth conditions alone straight into heaven, while the second seeks to pull heaven down to the level of earth and to substitute illusory 
dreams for waking realities. Look at this. So they, they're talking about um, real dangers that implicit our modern world and the concern of mankind. I don't think I really want to read this book. I don't because um, listen, I'm, I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling that book, you all. I'm not feeling it at all. What I'm feeling is um, something else is happening. There is, what is this, a super summary? What it is, the underground world of Vrilia. Let's see about this. It's a humanoid beings. Okay, now this is a lot better, you all. We can read it because we're talking about humanoid beings. I don't want to just read a book because I can't really have no visuals and I'm just stuck into a just solemn thing right there. That's right. Hollywood cast spells. Okay, let's look at this, you all. Let's see. The Coming Race, 1870. Now, when did the giants start to disappear? Was that in Tartaria? In the 18-somethings, they, they marched the last giant through in the 1800s. And now we're talking about um, this novel in that time. The British author and politician Edward Buller Lytton, the first Baron Lytton, published subsequently under the title of Real, The Power of the Coming Race. You well, this, there's something to this. The novel follows a nameless young adventurer named Tish as he explores the underground world of the Vrilia humanoid beings who have acquired immense psychic powers by manipulating a force they call the Vril based on the newly discovered force of electromagnetism. This sounds like kind of like the deep state or something in all these black budgets that they're involved in. The coming race was extremely popular in its time and the Vril briefly entered the English lexicon referring to any life-giving or powerful substance. The British yeast extract product Bovaril is named for it. Look at this, you all. Have you heard of this? The British yeast extract Bovaril is named for it? That's really strange. I've never heard of the Bovaril. The novel has also had a substantial afterlife among the occultists who continue to speculate that Lytton did not invent but discovered the Vril and the underground civilization of the Vril Ya. So this is like a, a real, sounds like a real civilization, you are. It really does. Underneath our feet. But how far under are they? Are they further than the like seven levels of the deep underground bases and things like that? Oh, they got 12 rims of reality. Mm. Mickey Mouse is the same as the German flag. That's really interesting. In Victoria, England, an unnamed young traveler of an independent means is visiting a friend of his works who works with, and he's a mining engineer. So I guess this is a real thing. Oh, wow. You are. We're going to talk about the lizards. They're talking about the reptilians now. So this is really going to be interesting. He, um, a young traveler of independent means, is visiting a friend of his who works as a mining engineer. The engineer has recently discovered a deep natural chasm opening into a newly dug shaft and two friends decide to explore it. As the narrator reaches the bottom of the shaft, the rope breaks killing his friend and stranding the narrator deep underground i remember reading quite a bit of this you i think i read like more or less the whole book and it was really interesting they got wings they got great big gigantic wings on their body and they got power now let's look at this as he explores the bottom of the chasm the narrator is attacked by a monstrous lizard creature and he flees stumbling upon the entrance to an underground world that is inhabited by humanoid humanoid beings who 
to him they resemble angels tall blonde beautiful and winged winged angels the narrator befriends one of these creatures despite the lack of a common language and his new friend takes him on a tour through an underground city whose buildings remind him who is the narr of ancient Egypt you are ancient Egypt has any of you all read this book or saw because um, they do have big gigantic wings and I think he gets offered mechanical wings to go on his body and he's really sticks out like a sore thumb is what happens like a sore sore thumb at the end of the tour the narrator guide takes him to his house and introduces him to his daughter Z and his son Tay. Z and Tay rapidly teach themselves English. The narrator is surprised, but Z explains the inhabitants of the underground world who call themselves the real Yah. And they have a range of parapsychological abilities, including telepathy, you all. So, you know, when you're, you have people who are channeling, could it be that, you know, you could be channeling these beings underground? Really think about it. They got telepathy and um, they could speak into your mind and you could be talking to the real ya and yet they may be telling you certain names and they may know things that are going on, but what if you're really talking to them when you're channeling because it could be it could be let me let me see if there is a picture of a Vrilya let's see the Z Vrilya Z Vrilya let's see if we can do this Vrilya Z wings let's see if they bring him up yeah we got some Vrilyas but um Here's what some of them are to look like. Now, these ones have dark hair. There's not, this is deviant art. Okay, this could be them. The book that I read, I don't think they had blonde hair in that book. They had long hair and they had wings. Look, understanding the Vareal Society. And they are a mono, monotheist. How do you say that? The belief in one superior being. They are that, you all. But look at this down toward the Hitler time. Do you think Hitler got his technology, say, from the Vrills? Could he had done it? Did they contact him? So you got some winged beings. Well, their hair is really long. Nazimo, I can't read that, you all. I will say this. I did see, and I'm not joking. Um, this is, um, so I saw, wish I could see, but let me see. So picture... Picture an angel, because this is what they wore, kind of, sort of. But they had their body, they had clothes on. They had clothes on their body. When I started this back in 2018, and it was really, storm clouds came. I was trying to catch the second sun, is what I was trying to do. And out of this two columns, there were these two columns that were fused together, massive storm clouds. They looked like gigantic hooks cliffs and out came the first gigantic wing being I thought they were hang gliders like but they weren't they had feathers and their feathers were like birds and they were like 20 to 30 foot black black wings with reddish orange at the bottom of their feathers and they had a black outfit on with a, a reddish orange cummerbund and reddish orange um, where their feet were is what they had on around seven of them flew right out and they were i guess they were all male species i guess they were but they had black wings you all and i'm not going to forget it at all i'm not they flew straight out of the sky 
and um, I could not I tried to take a picture my my phone would not take a picture for the life of me it would not do it at all so I did not get a picture of them but they climbed out climbed out they flew over my head and when they got to the end of my property they disappeared into somewhere they went somewhere you all but they did they showed right up and I'm thinking why why did they show up really think about it okay so they got this uh, they have a wide range of parapsychological abilities including telepathy this woman Z she, she I think she falls in love with the guy offends the narrator by suggesting that she is much better equipped to learn about him and his world than he is to learn about her nevertheless Z and Tay are good hosts and they agreed to explain their civilization to the guy the bulk of the book is took up with um, Z's lessons on the Virilia and their history so let's hear about who where how did the Virilias get here you all that's what we want to know about how did they get here the Virilia are the descendants of human beings who fled Earth's surface to escape the catastrophic flood perhaps the biblical flood flood due to the harshness of subterranean conditions the Vrilya have evolved to be stronger and more intelligent than modern surface dwelling humans they have also developed powerful tools the chief among these is an all permeating fluid called the Vril what if it's black what if the Vril is black I just popped in my head what if it is oh, I'm gonna take I'm gonna, I'm gonna we gotta find out what color the reels the real what color is the real what color is the real liquid I want to see what color it is it's a substance it's a substance that's exactly what it is is a substance the real substance substance I can't find it it's all it's only showing this stuff right here I like to find it I really would like to find it but I can't find it right now let's look, push it back to me Gina you we will we'd love to you're thinking Gina could we just please read without you going and looking at other places yeah I guess <laughs> I guess their descendants and they are under the surface and they have evolved to become stronger and more intelligent than the modern surface dwelling humans they have also developed powerful tools the chief among them is an all permeating fluid right here it's called the real Bueller Linton modeled this substance on the newly discovered force of electromagnetism and indicate he imagines it as an energetic force permeating all matter the Vrilya are able to control this force at will using Vril staffs hollow rods with several stops keys or springs by which its force can be altered modified or directed so that by one process it destroys and by another process it can heal the real staffs grant their users such awesome destructive power that war is unknown in the underworld two civilizations who were fighting with the real would be certain to destroy one another the real is a substance it can be used to heal as well as to achieve telepathy and other apparently paranormal abilities so if it's a substance you are do you think the substance is like liquid is it well is it like plasma could it be like a plasma thing if it can cause if it can give you telepathy if it can heal it's plasma thank you Amy Gill because I'm, I'm trying to vision it because I really plasma is like a life form it's very intelligent 
Okay, yeah, I think that sounds pretty good. Plasma, a life form. The wings of the Vrilia are another technological innovation, something like a personal real powered jetpack. The Vrilia also have <gasps> robotic servants, so pliant to the operations of the veal that they actually seem gifted with reason. These technologies that the Vrilia have built a technologica utopia without violence or lawlessness. The Vrilia live in separate city states with different laws, and those who do not agree with the laws of one city are free to move to another city. You are now think about this. Are we going to have that on the surface of Earth? Are we? Because they're going to have robots everywhere. They are. And um, the Vril are technologically advanced species. They are super powered and all of that. And now let's think about this. Mr. Musk said that we won't need the human language because it will have like an, a, a telepathy to where we can communicate with one another. We will also be able to read each other's thoughts. Remember, your thought will be everybody else's thoughts. And I really think that's how it is in this society. I'm not joking. I could be wrong, but Mr. T Mr. Musk said we will, the human language, he doesn't know what's going to happen to it because we're going to have telepathy. All right, so we got that. Um, they built a utopia. Now, city-states, is there blueprint plans for city-states? Now, let's look at this, you all. Do we have city-states economic form? Future F U T U R E twenty thirty. Gina, can you type? I can't even type you. Let me see. Okay, let's see. Now let's see what they have to say about it. We can do it. Um, cities are the engine of the global economy, home to a raging, raging, whatever it is. Um, welcome to twenty thirty. I own nothing and I have no privacy, and life is whatever. Welcome to my city, or should I say our city? I don't own anything, and I don't own a car, and I don't want to. I don't own a house, and I don't own appliances or clothes. The fifteen-minute cities that meets the human's needs but leaves your desires all wanting. We've got to see if these are the city states that they're talking about. You are. We really do. Everybody's all happy, and um, I wonder if you could move from. Some, if you don't like the laws in one area, could you move? You are free to move to another city. Oh, let's see. Various cities around the world have begun to embrace the 15 minute city approach. The 15 minute uh, city aims to reorganize urban space around home work, community, and anonymities. The idea is that every need is fulfilled within a 15-minute walk or short bike route. Now, there are communities right now where they have that going on. And uh, some people like it. They do like it. And if you live on a military base, now I will admit, when we lived on Hickam Air Force Base, I kind of liked it. Everything was right there. We could walk to it. We could even, we had bike rides, we had, we could go to the beach. You could do lots of things. You could, you could go to the ocean, they had the gyms, and you know, you can just hang out with your friends. Now, this might not be the ideal thing for most people, but I can say that I, I lived in something like that. That's how military bases are set up. Even when we had no military base when we live in Berlin, Germany, but they had a, um, they had a housing complex that was in Berlin. We lived in West Berlin. And we had our own school system for the children. We had the housing. 
We had the commissary, we had the BX, we had the cleaners, we had park we had parks in the backs of the buildings and stuff like that. You could walk around, you had sidewalks and I think that would be 15 minute cities. Fort Meade was too open of a base when we lived there. So, um, what are you trying to say, Gina? I'm not trying to say nothing. I'm not trying to say, I just said what I said. I'm just saying it. Um, so various cities around the world have begun to embrace the 15 minute city approach, but the urban life is about more than access to anonymities and the 15 minute model risks excluding disadvantaged communities. Even if there's a 15 minute baseline, a great city centers with world class experience should remain accessible to all. Um, the French, whatever, a place for the necessities of life. And it's the future cities. You reduce, you got community, you got to embrace it. Embrace it, you all. My, my nose is itching. That's okay. We're not going to look at it. I want to see. If, I want to see if you are not, if you don't like the city that you're in, can you move? You get a grocery store. Uh, it's important. You get great museums. I like, I love museums, you all. I'm not much of a theater person because you sit still and you can't move. So, let me, let me see this. You can take a subway. I'm, I really think that perhaps you could maybe be allowed to move from the one city to another like they do. Let's look at this. Um, okay, so you could move it. Gender roles. Now let's talk about gender. Gina, no, don't you dare touch that subject. Well, I want to talk about the gender roles amongst the realia because we can do that. We can talk about the rent, vent, vendor, gender, <laughs> gender roles around the realia. We can. Because um, I guess it makes sense. Let's do it, you all. We can do it. You know we can. We love it. Gender roles amongst the real ya are very different from the narrator's own society. Men called A-N in the real ya's language and women are called G-Y. So you have An and Gai. They are legal and political equals. Although women are generally considered the stronger and more intelligent. Well, I like the stronger and more intelligent women. I do. They may take, they take the pursu pursuer's role in the courtship, but upon marriage, they willingly defer to their husbands. For this reason, the Vrilia's benevolent autocrats are all male. And um, they're all senior professionals. Vrilia couples marry for three-year terms, you all. So if you were a Vrilia and uh, you married for a three-year term, after which women can choose to pursue a new partner, although this rarely happens in practice, <laughs> if you if you uh, become a you know part of the Vril, if after three years you think, well, I don't like this person anymore. Well, you're you're welcome <laughs> to pursue a new partner. <laughs> wow, you all see that you wouldn't have to wait that long now, would you? You would not have to wait that long. The Virilia believe in a God, but consider it pointless to speculate on the nature of such a being. They believe that life cannot be destroyed, but only changed from one form to another. Buller Linton clearly approves of the Vrilia's belief system, and in the history of the Vrilia, he satirizes that some of the beliefs and debates of his own day, for instance, the historical Vrilia, they were plunged into a thousand year war. <gasps> a thousand years. When a scientist claimed that the Vrilia were descendants from frogs. A satire of the contemporary debate about Darwinism. Mm. Impressed by the Vrilia, the narrator begins to adopt their clothing and their customs, and Z falls in love with him, putting the narrator in a difficult position. Z is free to propose to him, but if she does, he will be at risk. 
the society will frown will frown on a real ya woman's marriage to an inferior specimen and that's what he would be because he was human and here you have this z which she was a really prominent woman there wanting to marry this guy who would be considered totally inferior to her z confesses her love to her father who orders tay which is her brother is that who it is to kill him but tay informs z of his orders and z leads the narrator to the chasm by which he first entered the vrilia's world and the narrator concludes with a warning. The Vrilya will one day run out of space underground and they will return to the surface and destroying mankind if necessary. So they will one day, you all, come to the surface. And if they have to destroy mankind, they will destroy mankind. Have you heard that? Do you feel they're the Nephilim giants? Let's see. Are the Vareel the Nephilim giants? Let me see if I can get out of this spot. Can I get off of these things? Okay, are the Vareel. Are the Vareel the Nephilim? N-E-P-H-I-L-I-M. Giants. Uh, I don't see nothing about the real. Um, they are the biblical giants. I don't think they were that big, though. The Nephilim giants. Um, biblical giants. I'm not seeing it, you all. But the real, the real and the Nephilim. V R I L and N E P H I L I M wings I don't know what if they are a seraphim has six wings look at this mm. four days ago why did they <gasps> why did they do a photo why did they do an album like this you all look at that why would they do that Mm. Good evening. There was an album updated four days ago. The Vril and the Nephilim. Technical death metal release. <gasps> we got to look at this, you all, because look at this. The, the lizard Vril type picture warm. We got to look at the warm. Where the warm never dies. This might be scary, you all. It really might be scary for you. The alien agenda. So did we look at this? Um, Donald Marshall on the real reptilian agenda. Reels and droning. Droning. So we see this like here, 2018. I think the info starts. Let's read this because this is. Um, I think the info starts finally spread. When Donald Martian released his info about the Vrills and the cloning back in 2012, hardly anyone knew about this agenda. The information was kind of out there, but Donald Marshall's story filled in all the gaps between the major conspiracy theories. Here is another nice article about the Vril and the droning. Can we do this, you all? Let me take a picture of him, and I want to try to update him uh, on here. Let me just do this. I'm going to put this on here. I want to kind of somehow fit him on here and put a um, another thing to this to make it look kind of better. I really do. Let's do this. Let's do it. This would be cool to have this added to it. And you know, I'm going to bring it up on here. So now we're going to come over here and bring this on here with this. And we can scoot that over there, scoot that right there, shrink me down. Let's put this on here because I want to bring in that other image because now we're going to find out about the real and the Nephilim because this is, uh, this will be the story time. And maybe I just need to make it like that. 
we can put we can put her under there and uh, we can put him right there we can like take this image right here you all Gina are you playing around no I'm not I'm just trying to organize I like to organize and bring it down a little bit bring it down and well she doesn't need to be on here she can come she can go off of there but we can we can do this let me just put him on there because that would be a lot better because this is going to be interesting I haven't heard the real so I'm glad you said that that we um we can go and look at it now the reels and the droning I cut the bottom of it off but that's okay we're going to come over here you can watch me do it I'm going to update this and we're going to look at the reel because it really does kind of fit in with um there are cities you can live by the laws in some cities and yet in others let me put this in story time with Gina and we'll save it see we updated it we did it um, you hope we see something been seeing video of military in different states well they're doing their things but we want to see this right here the alien agenda now I do have the book but the reptilians forget the reptilians and the grays being from the Orion Nebula you all Sirius or Alpha Draconis. They are just Earth based terrestrial but subterranean troglodytes of several distinct morphologies, which we'll get in a moment. But at first, if you are budding a flat Earth, if you are a budding flat, flat Earther like myself, now this is all, this is to all the flat Earthers out there, um, this is for you because these aliens will fit a flat earth paradigm and then the one disclosed by the whistleblower Donald Marshall does not conflict it and we will talk about the parasitic predator that is plaguing humanity and behind the Illuminati are in fact purely terrestrial origin we got that we got it you all extraterrestrial origin uh, and if they're not too big you all if they are this big, if they're really tiny, oh, you think they're really tiny? Oh my gosh. Okay. If you're not, okay. They do not shape shift as reported by David Icke. We do not have shape shifting real. The body, they body snatch your body. You want your body snatched? You got the body snatcher. They take over your body and then you die. Okay. You all, I have no idea what's going on with here. I touched this thing and then something else happened and it's moved on me. Let's see if I can get this on here again. They take over your body. Gina, what are you? My screen is messing up on me. My touch screen. I just wanted to touch this. Just a this is this is not working for me you all what is happening to my touch screen okay look I just want to barely touch it they take over your body look, I don't see it doesn't want me to move it and the host dies and the old lizard body becomes an empty husk and the lizard in the human body is called the drone Okay, you're called a drone okay your body dies and all that's left is an empty shell and then it's a drone the lizard real type one pictured above does this it it, it protrudes into a warm like bundle of nerves we can't see it Gina okay this thing right here let's look at it this is what it looks like it does it takes over your body by protruding a warm like bundle of nerves that contains its consciousness which enters the victim through their eye socket and to the brain it then releases its parasitic cells and like a virus <gasps> to take over the body a, a para a, take over the body did you hear this we're going to have a catastrophic mutating event in two years. You can see in the image above that the person behind the dolly has a bandage over his eye. 
not this one. Oh, but this person laying in the bed. This is the catastrophic mutating event because they take over the body. They come up out of the ground and get you. And that's why they want to have this disclosure. Now let's look at this. The optic nerve is where they're coming through your eyeball. You all want to watch this because we didn't know he's going to find this. But this is, we got visuals. And visuals are really good if my plasma screen would function right. Okay, let's look at this. I'm going to make this bigger. They go in into your eye, your retina. Okay. Pro Bo 6. I have no idea what that is. Eye stalks are missing. I don't even know what an eye stalk is. Oh! <gasps> the Eye of Horus. Hmm. This is interesting. Suddenly, the medical symbol and the eye of Horus take on a new meaning. Oh. In fact, these things being revealed here will begin to pop up everywhere in the mainstream culture, albeit in a disguise and hinted at fashion. They go in your eye and um, through a knot. They are a, a warm like bundle of nerves and it has its own consciousness and it gets goes to the brain and it releases its parasitic cells like a virus. And the catastrophic mutating event is described as cyber virus. Okay, we're going to do it. The Vril type 1 and 2 are apparently controlled by the more humanoid form, yet still of reptilian origin. The Vril type 3. Oh, they got long necks. Hmm. That's interesting. It's really interesting. If I make this smaller, we can see it better. It's okay. Donald Marshall. I do not know this. I thought they were gene splice things. They are the things that the New World Order Illuminati were planning on using to usher people onto the saucers to take them away to Otteron. They are the Plogic blue, blue, blue Beam things. These are what they will use. They will put them in a Star Wars movie, Attack of the Clones, and they are identical. They wanted to be in a movie. They speak with a female soothing voice, and they are empathetic. They can make you feel one emotional... Oh, no. My, my, something happened. My phone clicked myself off is what happened. And um, I got kicked off my YouTube. That wasn't very nice on my phone. Okay. They speak with a female voice and are soothing. They're empathetic. Can you make... They can make you feel one emotional extreme to the next. Their pineal glands are way more advanced than ours. Well, why do they want to calcify, calcify, calcify our pineal gland? If they can have their pineal glands, why can't we have our pineal glands? Really? Oh, they also have spikes on the sides of their wrist that come out like a foot. And they look like a feather quill with no fluff on it. And it injects you with some kind of narcotic. A natural defense mechanism. The cavemen have drawn them on the walls. They were here even then, behind the scenes. And they like eating humans too. They're seven feet tall and more. They are the reason there is no more Atlantis. An empathetic mind blast doesn't feel nice. They have three fingers. They have a thumb and a claw. 
and they got sharp teeth like a shark and it's not good I'm freaking a a little this person's freaking a little they didn't build the saucers the Atlanteans built the saucers and primitive saucers too with gyros and all and the US military has improved upon the design the real society help them back engineer them and they're smarter than the real but they're still dumber than the average human they were waiting to find new human friends to take up the technology that they could not replicate themselves so Hitler the idiot went and made friends with them and got tech plans now I don't talk like this you I don't call people idiots okay that's not in my vocabulary they got the tech plans and set his scientists to work then the Americans took over N none underground are friendly okay so we got this a keynote speaker right here it is key to know that L, L God TV you think it is you think it sounds so far-fetched so far out there that there's no way this could even be real well look what's happened in our world right now it's unbelievable I'm thinking how on earth was this allowed to happen the world got turned upside down it did totally upside down so anything is plausible as far as I'm concerned and a lot of others yeah just let's add to it let's come on let's have something entertaining other than the the really horrible th stuff that's happening in the news the idea that reptilians are highly advanced is a psyop that fits with the outer space paradigm they must be highly advanced to have traversed vast reaches of interstellar space and yet if it is revealed it is revealed that they are troglites then we see that they are no smarter than orcs or goblins from the Lord of the Rings the one other gimmick they had was obtaining the relics of old high civilization of Atlantis but these were human relics saucers and such things cloning technology even according to Marshall a purely human invention albeit this long lost high civilization was brought it was what brought it down humans it did it take us back to the Stone Age they think that uh, perhaps it is due to the parasit parasitic beings their body snatching and their misuse of cloning technology for the sick sadistic purposes so snatching the real and the cloning are closely linked in a way and they don't understand oh that's kind of gross to you all the body snatching JJ uh, Abrams French there is a crisis of a body snatching shape-shifting from a parallel universe now CERN wants the parallel universe we do know that further analysis show them that they are partly mechanical with AI parts uh oh but could this really be a subtle disclosure of the real parasitism well that's what they want uh, technology integrated with human human and machine meld together so how can we gonna have this parasitic mutating event I mean catas cataclysmic I said parasitic <laughs> could be parasitic it really could be look at that's gross you all oh are these real people in the show they s oh no oh wow that's what they do in the show and then they stick that thing in their bodies it's a droning so what's what's with the cloning the island the Illuminati supervisor with his pyramid computer mouse integrates MRI brain scanners oh what is that oh what is that you all what is that coming out of there did anybody watch this thing right here they look like little bitty BBs uh, that are coming out of their thing and oh, look like it's going somewhere in their body they hold your eye open they do is what they do it's the black goo look the host is a romance novel how can it be romance 
about Earth in a post-apocalyptic time being invaded by a parasitic alien race known as the souls. And it follows um, souls predicament when the consciousness of her human host refuses to cooperate with the takeover of her body. I might remind you of this scene in the Minority Report where they are removing his eyes for new ones to fool the scanner. Oh, <laughs> that's gross, you all. Oh, my gosh. Oh. Mm. Don't plug in. Don't do it. No, you don't want to. If we accept Marshall's testimony as a true regarding the modus modus operandi of the lizards, then through that lens, the symbolism from the Hollywood stars, the symbolism from the Hollywood starts to pop out more and more, you all. This is the true meaning behind the all one eye symbolism that is so disgusting. It is so gross, you all. Tech. Well, with the board, you get one bionic eye, remember? They will retrofit you if you're a Borg. You get one bionic eye. See the Borg's bionic eye? Borg, bionic, like Steve Austin in the Bionic Man. He's got one bionic eye. Bionic eye. Borg's bionic eye. Yes, cyborg. Right there. They got the technology. And then we have Steve Austin in the Bionic Man. Bionic man and I. And see, he's got his bionic eye. So it's really been around for a long time. And he can zoom up with his eyeball. Steve Austin will be that man. Better than he was before. Better, stronger, faster. The six million dollar man with his bionic eye and the Borg. Well, there's the bionic eye right there. Okay, so we got it. Okay, we're supposed to be reading this, you all. Is this what we're reading? No, we're reading this. That is so disgusting looking. Roseanne Barr mentions droning in passing and remembers most of these celebrities are too afraid to speak out and corroborate Marshall's testimony. For some reason, Roseanne Barr can speak out. Because she's got a big mouth. Perhaps she has some kind of interconnections and protections that they don't know about. Um, they written songs. Somebody is a cash cow. Illuminati whistleblower. Oh, that's got this um, psychopaths in charge. You know, so this is so what if it isn't really this? What if it really is the things going in the eyes? Let's type it in. I don't want to do it. Um, So we see them. The real got them all. Oh my gosh. This is disgusting. Oh my goodness gracious you all. This is not very nice to look at. Oh. You all, I am sorry. I didn't know that this stuff is going to be whatever... Oh, no. He wore that with the badge of honor. He did. I remember that. Oh, no. The Black Eye Club. Oh, wow. We knew you were one. We got you shape shifting. Oopsie. And you too, dude. Oh my God. You all, this is not normal. 
That is not normal by any stretch of the imagination to have people with black eyes, with purple eyes. That is not normal. Public figures with their eyes like that. There is some type of aliens, underworld uh, beings that are doing this. Evil, evil beings, That because that is not normal. It's not at all. No, because they are public public figures. Just, just suppose I would show up. Just suppose I showed up on here one day and I've got a black eye. My eye is black. And I have no reasonable explanation for it. I don't. Or I've got dark glasses on one day like that. And I wear them for quite some time. And I say, oh, well, I just had um, an eye procedure. And I need that to kind of keep the light off my eye or something like that. Because you've seen people who have had, all of a sudden, they had these dark glasses on when there was nothing wrong. And there's always a cover story. But if you're a public figure and you got your eyes black like that, I'm going to start now. Now that I've seen that, I'm going to think that the real, are these, you got, you got taken over and they got inside your body. And um, that's what I'm going to think. That some type of extraterrestrial alien-like species, some uh, non-human species got a hold of your body is what I'm going to think. And um, I'm going to try to, that's what I'm going to think. when I, If I see a public figure like that. I'm going to think about it. I am. And of course, we're not going to talk about this other thing either. But these right here, well, that's a little bit inappropriate. They gave him a black eye too. Why would they do that? Oh, what? You look at Time Magazine. <gasps> Why would Time Magazine do that, you all? Look, the great American downgrade. Mm, who are you? Wow. Who is Mattis? Mattis. Who is Mattis? Oh, we knew you, Reed. You got it too. Are you all shocked? Harry Reed. That doesn't even look like Harry Reed. They're proud of it. Oh, no, you all. Tom Hanks, honey, you got one, too. Oh, my gosh. Did you get one, Donald Trump? I don't think I've seen. Did you get you? Some men are given black eyes and some are not. They didn't give him a black eye. If they have, we have not seen it. We have not. Is this is this true, you all? You know they didn't. You know somebody did not take their fists and hit them upside the head, and black do that to their eye. They're prominent people. He got it in both of his eyes. She got it too. Well, I, she probably did get it. Oh, how on earth did we get to here? Oh my gosh. You all, we don't like to see that. We we seen that. I think I've seen enough. You go ahead and sport that eye. You're going to have your eyes taken out one day. Yeah. Wow. Oh my gosh. He got a busted lip. Oh my gosh, this is terrible. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. I think we've seen enough about them. Who told me to look? How on earth did we get to looking at their eyeballs? Well, yeah, it's because of this thing right here. The uh, symbolism, and um, it was the Vrilia. Right here, they, they get into a knot. Your body is called a drone. 
they um, they use a warm like but bundle of nerves that contains their consciousness and they enter you through your eye socket and they go into your brain and then they release their parasitic cells like a virus and they take over your body and you can see in the image above somebody's got a bandage on him these right here take over your body so you imagine this is worse than having a baby they, they're sticking it in a small socket in your head and that's how they do it and it's really gross it is so gross oh my gosh i done we we, we done seen too much you all I'd rather see bionic eyes. I would. <laughs> but, um, yeah. No, this is really bad. It's bad, you all. Do you know anybody personally who's, who was fine one day and then they woke up with that on their eye? Do you? I don't know anybody. Do you all? It's not normal, Michelle, at all. It's not. The eyes are the window to the soul. Yes, they are. Oh, they took their eyes out. Yes, MacFurl, it is. Um, embryos. That's right. I don't remember any. Of course, we don't. We don't. We ain't got friends. We're not friends with big famous people. Great big mouthpieces. We're not, but if you see a famous YouTuber, all of a sudden, like millions and millions of followers and stuff, and they got a black eye, or they're wearing glasses all of a sudden, yeah. Mmm. It's like, wow. YouTubers. You t and now I'm not going to do I'm not I'm not I'm not going to go any more in it. You I'm going to get ourselves in trouble. They warned about it. We only have six months, approximately six months to nine months to have a congressional investigation going on about this evil that's going on, this black budget, this deep state that since 1950s, um, the constitutional government or whatever of the United States is stripped of its power. And something else, and it's in the earth. He said it's inside the earth, but it's like the power basis here in the United States, and it's not nice. So we gotta watch out. Yeah. Well, in Freemason, you have to believe in the higher power. It doesn't matter what that higher power is. If you have a belief in a higher power, then you can be a Freemason. They said that's how they said it worked, and I thought, okay. Just a belief in higher power. Didn't matter which. Which is really strange if you think about it. But so be it. You save yourself. That's what I thought too. Lens of love. I thought it was a ritual of them. Where you just get beat up. But as you can see. It can't be that. No they're going to go in your eyeball. And they got movies of them going in your eye. And it's supposed to be awful really bad i'm gonna go you i am so sorry this is kind of gory it's not a good way to end a video but it's aliens otherworldly beings and um they are a species you know what they remind me of they remind me of the arachnids how there was like spiders on the moon or something like that what if they are kind of like that and they made their way into the earth what if they did yeah but then where's the reptilians come from? And where's the greys come from? Where do they all come from? Because people see them. That's right. No, Mickey Martin, honey, we ain't going to look in that. That's a whole off-subject ball game on this channel. Totally. Totally off-subject. Yeah, people know about it. But that right there, I, I really thought that too, that they got... Um, beat up as part of an initiation but it's much deeper much deeper i don't think they would beat up an old woman like the queen just hey we're going to you're going to participate in our ritual we're going to beat you up no they just hold her down and get her in her eye like that 
just like that. Humunculus, yes, a, a cult. That's right. So I'm going to go, you all. Thank you, Apple Brooks, honey. And um, thank you all for um, being on here. Yeah. And um, with that being said, hello, wherever you are in any part of the world. Hello, from my heart to yours. Love you. Have a wonderful rest of your evening. And is it like I don't like to really focus on this gory stuff like that? I didn't know it was going to end up like that. I didn't. I was just satisfied with the wing beings, with the gigantic wings underground. How on earth we got into that substance and then we ended up with that right there. That's the real, but the real is a substance. So this is this is all weird. It's something's not adding up, but something's going on. Yeah, we're gonna do it. That's right. Have a wonderful.